how does it manifest at all and if so what does that look like yeah i think that my kiddos that have had really big changes in behavior all of a sudden that can be like a red flag for me so I had a kid at the beginning of the year who, of course, being the sixth grade counselor, I didn't know them at the beginning of the mm -hmm. year, um, but he was like really solid behavior at the beginning of the year. All of a sudden, he started acting out. And so mm -hmm. in checking in with him, I found out that he and his family are in transition and they needed all of these resources that he wasn't getting. Right. So of course, you know, home life is all of a sudden unstable. You come to school and you're not going to be able to concentrate. You're not going to be able to stay awake. You're not going to be able to do the things that you should be doing when you don't right. have what you need at home. Right. Um, so that was, I mean, just a sudden change in behavior. Now I have a relationship with kids who they'll just come to me and be like, Miss Street, like I don't have anything to eat at home for this weekend and I'm worried about it. Right. Um, so I'm really lucky that just like relationship building, they will identify themselves a lot of the time. Right. Um, but I definitely use the teachers and they use, they'll pass information along to me. They'll be like, mm -hmm. hey, this kid's sleeping a long class and he hasn't normally done that. Or, mm -hmm. hey, this kid was talking to me earlier today and mentioned that mom and dad are getting a divorce. And mm -hmm. so they're now going from like a house to an apartment. Like, do you might maybe want to check in on them and make right. sure things are okay? Right. Um, because it's not only like the kiddos who are in transition in their homes, but also the kids who may be going from like a dual income household right. to a one income household. Right. Um, so I think that that's a population that sometimes kind of gets forgotten because they're not necessarily in poverty, but it's a lifestyle change. Attainment, financial security, and subjective perceptions of social status and social class. Socioeconomic status can encompass quality of life attributes as well as the opportunities and privileges afforded to people with society. Economic status may also have more traumatic events, mm -hmm. adverse life experiences, chronic mm -hmm. stress, mm -hmm. and those things can be linked to um, lower health outcomes, can be linked to um, lower career possibilities or potentials, um, can be linked to um, more behavioral referrals mm -hmm. um, or seen by some people as low motivated or not right um, and so but all these yeah are not necessarily like a causation or a look at the sign and this is what it points to right but is more like a correlation due to other things that they may be experiencing as they're trying to find food mm -hmm. safety mm -hmm. the right. sense of belonging right Children in low-income schools are less likely to have well-qualified teachers. A teacher's years of experience and quality of training are correlated with children's academic achievement. Schools with students from the highest concentrations of poverty have fewer library resources to draw on than those serving middle-income children. Children from low SES families enter high school with average literacy skills five years behind those of high income students. In 2014, the high school dropout rate among persons between 16 to 24 years old was highest in low income families as compared to high income families. The success rate of low-income students in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics disciplines is much lower than that of students who do not come from underrepresented backgrounds. Individuals within the top family income quartile are eight times more likely to obtain a bachelor's degree by age 24 as compared to individuals from the lowest family income quartile. Children from lower SES households are about twice as likely as those from high SES households to display learning-related behavior problems. A mother's socioeconomic status is also related to her child's inattention, disinterest, and lack of cooperation in school. Perception of family economic stress and personal financial constraints affected emotional distress or depression in students and their academic outcomes. Racial, ethnic, and socioeconomic barriers generally hinder individuals' vocational development. Career barriers are significantly higher for those from poor backgrounds, 
people of color, women, those who are disabled, and LGBTIQ identified individuals. Individuals from a lower social class generally had less career-related self-efficacy when it came to vocational aspirations. Those from higher social class backgrounds tend to be more successful in developing career aspirations and are generally better prepared for the world of work because of access to resources such as career offices, guidance counselors, better schools, high-level social actors, and familial experience with higher education. So whenever um, new policies come in line, like desegregation of schools, they were looking at e equity mm -hmm. of schools. Um, and so, but then other times they may be looking at, um, you know, Wake County, maybe about 10 years ago, did a school choice program where you could sign your kid up for any school in the county. Right. They weren't looking at efficiency or cost of that, they were looking at um, underlining freedom and choice mm -hmm. um, to education. And so um, typically, and uh, like right now at this moment, a lot of the freedom and choice in your education and therefore your access to education benefits people with a higher socioeconomic status. Mm -hmm. So the people that are bused to a school outside their neighborhood, they don't have a as much of a choice in what school they can access right. um, as people who maybe live in that neighborhood and um, can afford the home in that neighborhood for that desirable school. Right. Right. But then historically too, like schools were meant to benefit a certain class of people mm -hmm. and raise them up and keep them in holding like all that access and equity to um, privilege, to certain jobs, to mm -hmm. money, mm -hmm. to capital. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, what was the question again? It was um, the, yeah, so the challenges faced. Yeah. So one thing um, that I do just in general um, from the first year that I teach is I keep a hygiene bag. Mm -hmm. uh, and so um, there's some things, some shame factors that exist uh, sure. for kids. And one of it is hygiene. And it's something that you can't really, you know, do on your own. Um, mm -hmm. I remember when I was growing up, um, my family was extremely poor, uh, and I would go visit my grandparents uh, over on the weekends, and um, one time my grandma asked me, you know, how are you washing your clothes? Uh, and I told her, you know, we wash them in the sink because we didn't have a washer. Mm -hmm. uh, and so she started having me bring, like, pack a suitcase of clothes to do laundry at her mm -hmm. house. Mm -hmm. um, but that's something that, like, our kids go through as well. Like, they have dirty clothes, and right. so, uh, you know, over the summer, usually I pick a few kids that I taught the previous year and we go back to school shopping and mm -hmm. it's, and they have new clothes and we go right. to TJ Maxx and Target and we find some things that are a deal and, mm -hmm. um, and so that's a small way, the hygiene bags during the year, uh, people, I mean, it's seventh grade and so people start smelling, right. they don't know that they smell, they don't know really how to deal right. with their smell and right. so that's right. two like little ways that mm -hmm. I engage during before the school year starts, mm -hmm. back to school shopping and then during the year, um, mm -hmm. just providing things to limit the amount of shame oh. that might happen. Uh, programs exist like Backpack Buddies. Mm -hmm. um, I know that some schools, like our school a few years ago, uh, during the teacher rallies, really uh, came together and finding a way to provide mm -hmm. meals for uh, s students that wouldn't be in school that day. Right. Um, and so I know that there are some movements as far as food. I know that our ESL department last year uh, worked hard so that people weren't wasting food right and so how can we you know use food that may be thrown to waste uh, whether mm -hmm. it's packed lunch or school lunch how right. can you know it be redistributed without right. being wasted uh, right. for families that need it right. I deserve an education I deserve to know how to read and write right. and do math and right. so having high expectations but not neglecting that need right. and so hey you know you need a nap I get that so how about you put your head down for 10 minutes and then mm -hmm. I want the rest of the period with you Right. And then we can talk about how you're going to take a nap on the bus today. Right, right. Um, but that's that's part of that relationship that's right. built when you ask questions mm -hmm. and you take the time to ask mm -hmm. questions, mm -hmm. uh, or you have you take the time to not shame people mm -hmm. uh, about you know kids come back from being y'all stink or instead of right. you know I'm going to walk around today and I'm trying to figure out you know who's not smelling the best right and then you know 
at lunch or the next morning, hey, just so you know, I have to spray on deodorant if you need some. Right. right. Uh, just trying to build deeper relationships so that kids are more comfortable. Because sure. when they're more comfortable, they they definitely listen, but then they also are able to access their voice so that they can.